Welcome to our coverage of the X-Wing Sword Championships here on the Lesson Geek channel. My name is Travis. And I'm Peyton. And this game is from the top eight elimination round from the Dogs of War Sword Championship in Palm Bay, Florida that was held on January 17th. Uh, I am actually playing on the left here in this game, and my opponent uh, is Brennan, I, I believe it was. Brennan or Brandon? Yeah, I got it. Uh, not, yeah, not entirely sure. Sorry, Brennan. <laughs> but uh, he's on the right here. Um, my list, I am running the 58-point Super Dash, you know, triple action, whatever people want to call them, uh, with Push a Limit, Kyle Katarn, the title, the Heavy Laser Cannon, and Engine Upgrade. And uh, rounded it out, the other 42 points, with uh, Corn Horn, with Veteran Instincts, Fire Control System, and R2-D2. And on the other side of the table, we have a pretty much standard Rebel Swarm, uh, a lot of bees. Yeah. Three bees all, and uh, two Z95s. Yeah. Uh, they're the higher skill, I believe. Uh, four skill. Yeah, and I think he, he called it. Uh, he, he called the name of his squad nothing special. That's what he said. So I don't know if he just was afraid of predator or something, but he made them all four skill with uh, no upgrades. But, I mean, I I enjoy the uh, absolutely no upgrades uh, builds right, purely because yeah. I don't want to pay attention to uh, cards. Yeah, exactly. Um. But yeah, he, he did make them all four skill instead of playing two skill and maybe uh, uh, getting like an extra Z95 or something. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, he just was afraid of Predator or something. That or he, you know, he was expecting maybe or a, a TIE Swarm or something. Other Rebel Swarms. There were some other people playing a lot of uh, two skill, you know, Rebel Swarm kind of builds too. So I, I, I believe he's, he's a local, do you know? Um, I think so. Yeah. yeah, and I think the other Rebel Swarm was also relatively local that I played against. Yeah. So maybe that their meta is right. kind of more focused on the... Yeah, local or maybe some guys yeah, that were from uh, like Orlando or somewhere like that that wasn't quite as far away. We came all the way down from Jacksonville, which is about, what, two and a half hours? And was there somebody from Miami? A couple people from um, Miami, maybe? I, I think so. I think, there, I think there was even one guy that, say, lives in Seattle or something that happened to be in town for whatever reason, for business or something. All right, they're starting the first turn in... You kind of notice that there's a straight line of asteroids. Yeah, that are completely on the other side, which is normally right. People will then immediately set up on that side, kind of funnel. Right. Um, Y'all ended up starting on the other side. <laughs> yeah, um, I know he put uh, I think a couple of those asteroids down there, and then and then he had to set up first, and he went to this side. So it is what it is. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I've uh, since I've you know played this a little more uh in the time since then i've kind of changed a little bit of how i do the asteroids but um yeah i guess uh i'm not too worried about it i'm just kind of gonna react off of where he sets up and where he goes kind of well obviously dash doesn't worry about well yeah <laughs> asteroids anyways but yeah you want to just try to use them you know to your advantage to screen all these ships yeah, I guess the kind of idea is since you don't have to, you know, deal with them with dash, that you could totally just throw them all directly at your right. opponent because they are going to have to deal with it. Yeah, I, I was looking, I'm laughing at the way I was leaning over here. I think I was uh, kind of ducking down because of this camera or something. <laughs> Whenever I go to lean yeah. over the table, I'm trying not to lean way out there. I'm pretty sure I kicked every camera I was in front <laughs> yeah. of that day yeah, at right. some point or another. Yeah, uh, there's the uh, uh, albino movement template. Yeah, yeah the always barrel rolling <laughs> template. <laughs> Things have seen some better days. Now, is uh, Cornhorn, is you set him up in that angle for a particular reason? or? Yeah, basically, um, the idea is like, you know, he's going he's gonna to do a hard turn uh, kind of towards the opponent there and then barrel roll back and... Uh, Kind of is more of a slow play, or about maybe about the same, but you know, kind of gives you a little more of a. Slow, well, I guess I did a three there instead of a two, so I don't know. But it's just kind of a slow play thing instead of going straight at him. Yeah, are you trying to get information? To yeah, see if I'm he's just trying to I'm pretty much. Soft. You maybe. just kind of hang out and see how fast he comes in at me, or you know, you basically with this list, like you want to get him to just commit to something and then capitalize on that. You know, if you know he's going to chase after, you know, this ship or that ship, then. Uh, you know, you can use that to your advantage. So now, like, Corrin kind of hangs around like he's looking to fight. Yeah. Dash goes running off, you know, past him. Um, but already on this turn, I think Corrin's going to end up doing a hard turn to the left. 
Well, because obviously at no point yeah. do you ever want to fly straight at a Rebel Swarm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes people just think maybe you're just doing something crazy or whatever. <laughs> you know, they might think one guy is for some reason. But I think Korn's going to turn left kind of like towards where, you know, Dash is now mm-hmm. and uh, then do a barrel roll to the edge of the board and then after that just beeline straight down the board and kind of lead these ships while uh, Dash tries to just go kind of across the board, diagonal. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, the opponent, not assuming you're going to go straight, Yeah. he's going to do a soft turn, Yeah. get a large number of arcs covering yeah. most of the board. And there may have even been a way here to uh, to actually keep Corrin kind of down in this corner and flank that way. You yeah. know, because, no, yeah, you got to figure he's probably... He's thinking that, so he's going to do this. He's not going to keep coming straight, but exactly. Um, but I don't know. You know, you don't. You just don't like to ever get trapped if you can help it with uh, one of these guys, because then you know the next round where you go from there, you might get blocked. You know, it could be bad news. They can go down quick to all that firepower if you get caught. Um, there's you know really just a lot of the top lists that are going around right now, whether it be Decimator, Phantom, or you know this or that. They're they're all about uh, just trying not to get caught. In uh, you know, getting blocked and getting in a kill zone from these uh, these other lists that just tend to be B wing heavy, Rebel Swarm, whatever. Yeah. Just a lot of firepower. The pure dice, like thirteen, yeah, thirteen attack rolls at range two. Yeah, most things can't live against yeah. it, and especially not a Decimator or even a Falcon. Yeah, it's not what you want. When they still have all their ships on the board and you haven't picked a few away, like you're not going to match firepower with firepower unless you're doing basically the same thing, or you know, like a Tide Swarm or. You know, something somewhere like that. Now, luckily, okay. Dash, with obviously his many movements, yeah. is going to be able to at least keep most of those bees in the back yeah. out of range completely. Yeah. The uh, you know, and the trick with Dash is obviously keeping your distance, but, um, you know, just in general, but you, and, and or, you know, dodge as many arcs as you can, but you want to make sure that you stay in a uh, position where you can get you know, a shot or something. You don't want to be too passive and have turns where you're not getting any shots because, uh, yeah, especially with the two-ship build, you're only going to get so many shots. You're basically going for quality over quantity and um, just trying to have rounds where maybe you have a shot and they don't. Um, yeah, he's target locking there. So I think, let's I think go over, um, roll here. for people not f- completely uh, familiar with uh, right. Super Dash, he goes forward one. Right. Or he went forward two. Two, yeah, but still a green maneuver. Clearing the stress. Right. Which then... Gives him a free focus token from Kyle Katarn. Yeah, and now he's able to take actions after laying on the asteroid because yeah, of Dash. Yeah, because of his own text, yep. To which he will... And then, so he uh, does two more actions with push limit. He target locks while I was still sure that I was in range. Yeah. And then I barrel roll out so that ideally Dash is now only in range of that lead Z95 and just trading shots with that one guy. With a focus target lock. Yeah, with a focus target lock and a heavy laser cannon. Um, yeah, Kakatarn grants you a free focus token whenever you clear stress. So, um, yeah, see, there you go. That's perfect right there. Just barely in range three of that one guy, out of range of everybody else. Yeah, and realistically, if you get that situation, you don't even need Cornhorn yeah. firing, and that's why he... Exactly. ...basically trying to get into a better position with that maneuver. Yeah, and the idea, it's sort of a long-term play here that, uh, depending on exactly where the bees go, like, Corn could hook back in, or he could continue to run if they're kind of still coming across, and then eventually K-turn, which I think is what I end up ultimately doing with him. Uh, yeah, so we see we have four hits here against one of eight, so that Z95 almost gets one shot, but not quite. But, um, yeah, it's it's sort of like a uh, just a long-term play to eventually have Korn flanking him once he's, you know, got everybody chasing Dash. But, um, yeah, the the beauty of Kalkatarn is uh, it's not actually an action, so you can still choose to focus later uh, to have a double focus, or you can... Um, if you ever get double stress from a rebel captive or something like that, and you do a green maneuver, you at least have the one token, so you have one action. It, it's basically worded the same way as soon to your fell, except when you get rid of the stress instead of when you uh, gain it. And luckily there, since you're at range three... Yeah, I get the extra easy, green dice. Easy avoiding yeah. the random... Yeah, two, two reds on three greens, and I still had the focus because I got a good attack roll. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, it just... Um, this kind of list just puts these uh, 
swarmless or rebel swarmless or whatever you want to call them. They're just kind of between a rock and a hard place. They uh, they start to chase one guy and then that guy runs away and the other guy comes back to flank them. They turn around and you know you switch the other way and um, you know you just you're just kind of dancing around them and picking at them uh, from the edges and not not giving them that stand up fight that they want with just their superior dice. You know. You know, my crazy idea looking at that situation right there would have been to hard two or even hard three dash mm -hmm. assuming that my opponent is going to continue either going straight or take a right hand turn and right. I get behind all of them of course that has a massive risk towards if he just does towards like, where they're coming from yeah, yeah exactly it's a massive risk if they just go straight like one yeah. and suddenly I'm getting popped yeah and you got hard one on the dial too the, I mean the problem is that those are all white maneuvers, so you know you need to clear. The you stress. don't clear the stress, and and sometimes in a pinch, you know it's it's a good surprise or when you have to do that, sure. But yeah, this early on it could be a risk if they don't go that way. I guess he equipped the asteroid there. That's good. Um, but yeah, you can. I mean, often you could do you could do a one bank. I uh, probably could have done a one bank in that same direction back here. Uh, I guess to dash is right. And uh, that would clear the stress. And as long as you don't run into them, which it looks like I wouldn't, unless maybe that Z that is about to move does a four straight, um, then you would be able to do all the action. You do all the barrel and boosting you want, and yeah, you can get behind them. Um, I mean, obviously, that is a probably a way too risky of a play to pull on the third turn of maneuvers. Yeah, I have done similar things, uh, and then. The, another store championship top eight round that did something like that and it almost cost me so yeah but uh it can it can be yeah then you've just sort of uh matadored the whole group of them and they're all by it you know <laughs> but um you know i guess on the turn after that they'd all be trying to k turn around and uh, you know i'm not sure um they might end up ultimately catching up to you faster anyway I, I, maybe maybe not i don't know you end up cornering yourself yeah Basically, heading towards a corner with any ship against Thrill Swarm is a terrible idea. Yeah, because yeah. they will, they will, they will catch you. It makes it a lot easier to yeah corner you and block they, you. Yeah, blocking is probably the worst part of getting in that kind of corner situation. You can't really yeah. maneuver left or right with any ease because right. of the edges. You're not going to fly off. Yeah, so we do a one bank to the left, and you can tell just by looking at it, it looks like one bank to the right probably would have made it. Yeah. Without hitting that guy? I don't know, it's kind of close. But um, to be able to do what we were talking about. But even here, um, I should be able to probably barrel boost and barrel roll and, yeah, just stay at distance. And um, It looks like just the barrel roll could have gotten you out of all but maybe one of the arcs. Because obviously yeah. that B is sitting on a rock, it's not shooting. Yeah, and that back one's pretty far away, it might be at range. Um, I think I'm trying to get this just right so that on the next action I can boost and not end on a rock. Right. Yeah, so that you can still shoot. That's really the one thing you have to think about when it comes to asteroids or dash, but a lot better than uh, having to worry about it all the time like everybody else. But yeah, and then that's yeah, that's another problem with dash when you're running over asteroids all the time is not moving them around with the templates and everything. And, then, and of course, this uh, mat is some, yeah. one of a slippier, slippier mats you. Almost one of one of those yoga mats. Yeah. Just because they're a little stickier when you're flying. Even if you're not dashing, you still yeah. fly over asteroids. That template ends up bonking stuff. Yeah. And it might have been nice there to have Corrin do like a too hard and be flanking these guys already. But um, I guess, you know, I just wanted to play it safe. I didn't know if they were going to kind of keep coming on the path they were. And, you know, want Corrin looking at all of them by himself. Yeah. Um, in another game that I played with this, it. Uh, Corn barely got caught with a bunch of range threes from behind in a similar situation and got killed early because he didn't uh, he basically didn't well he basically didn't do the the five straight like that to get out when he should have you know he did that a turn late so better safe than sorry I guess and as you see here is another another round yeah. where half of the ships are not even going to fire yeah I guess I was considering maybe shooting that b-wing there because um I mean, obviously you want to finish off ships if you can, but sometimes it just feels like uh, when you got that heavy laser cannon against a guy that has one health left, you might, well well, might want to just slap a B-Wing for three or four. But I, I decided to uh, just go with uh, shooting the Z95 there. And then I rolled three eyeballs there, but uh, 
yeah, and I, I went ahead and used the target lock because I had it on him anyway. I guess just thinking that if somehow yeah, I got shot back, I'd have it for defense. But um, I'm pretty sure I, 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 I might not even been even thinking about the B-Wing being on the rock. I might have been thinking it was still going to shoot me or something. So Because yeah. I could have just spent the focus and killed it. So I think that's what it was. I just was forgetting the B-Wing wasn't shooting. Right, you killed it with it. Yeah, I killed the Xenon 5, I'm saying. You would have, regardless... I, I, I was thinking, I think I was thinking I was maybe going to get shot by the B-Wing, so I might as well just use the target lock and keep the focus for defense. Yeah, right there, I'm like, oh yeah, he's sitting on the rock, because we were just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Should have just focused and kill him, but I got him anyway, so. And then, uh, alright, so that's one down, and on we go here. Um, another thing with Dash, uh, a lot of people, when they start trying to play him, um, they're... Barrel rolling and boosting almost every time. Sometimes when you don't need to do both, um, just because they can, basically. And um, you do want to try to basically only pull as much of that as you need to and um, use your other actions for extra focuses and target locks and stuff to make those shots really count. Yeah, it's one of those things where if you're playing a low-numbered ship build, you need to be dealing damage with that ship every right. turn. Yeah, especially with just the way this particular build is, how it's a little extra finesse and kind of dancing around as opposed to maybe, uh, you know, Fat Han, at least with, like, three Z9-5s or something where you kind of go in and just slug it out. Um, you know, like, Corrin hasn't even done a shot yet. Yeah. So I've got even fewer shots, you know, so I really want to make sure that that uh, they're accomplishing things. So Corrin ends up, in many games not getting his shots off yeah. until the later rounds anyways cuz yeah. if he gets, you know, surprise turned on. Yeah. And suddenly it's a 1v6. It's uh not exactly the Yeah, Corn's I guess the main thing is Corn's number one goal is just to stay alive. Um the second that you have just the one threat on the table, even if you've traded, you know, for a ship or two, and, and you know, against any matchup regardless, you know, if it's this or whatever. Um just the second that everybody can key in on dash and try to chase him down and get within range one of them or block him or whatever uh, his life gets a lot harder so you just want to keep that second threat on the table that could you know come back and get him or whatnot and um yeah i suppose it ends up being much like a decimator phantom in the way the yeah. phantom you just gotta keep him honest is, is, yeah it's basically <laughs> is, one it's he's blocking large amounts of the map you don't want right. to go over there with one or two ships and yeah. try to face him he's gonna yeah He's going to double tap. He's going to smoke a guy one turn. Right. Yeah, the Phantom's probably a little better at at least getting shots while dancing around because of the way you can just turn all over the place with that thing. Yeah, basically um, do a, a hard turn with barrel rolls. Yeah, so you're able to, like, you know, still get shots while you're kind of uh, playing conservatively. You know, even if it's just range three or whatever, they still, you know, it's basically a heavy laser cannon, right? So, um... More asteroids. Strand yeah. But, um... So Corrin, Corrin's definitely the guy to have in here. Yeah, but you know he's no phantom. But um, you know, but Dash is able to uh, give people, especially builds like this, a harder time than a decimator. So you know, it's it's a trade off. And at this point, your opponents hit two rocks, and at that, and you kind of think, yeah, that's that's what you want. Yeah, in you, a build like this, you need them to at least be modifying their movements to avoid it. If not straight up, yeah, and that's by. another thing. Like you know, maybe I could have set up on the opposite side of the board because there's rocks down there, and, and maybe gone straight down and had them kind of turn into me. But ultimately, uh, you see a lot of people do that, and you get you end up getting down towards the far side of the board, and sometimes all they had to do was do one small turn and then come straight towards you, yeah. and then you're kind of then you're turning straight into them, and that doesn't really help. So, I think here was. Um, with uh, Corrin heading towards that corner down there where there's kind of a couple asteroids, you're, you're pretty confident that by the time Corrin gets down there and K-turns, he's going to be safe from getting pounded when he does that because they're not all going to be coming in at that angle there because, you know, those rocks are going to block him from that. Yeah. And then he's going to kind of sneak back through them. So, um, like I said, I've, I've kind of changed where I throw the rocks out a little bit. I kind of like more of a diagonal line across the board um, so that you're kind of always on one side or the other of it. But, um, you know, it's just kind of how it worked out here. But, yeah, you always, no matter where they are, you always want to try to make them fly through them, uh, particularly with lists like this. Not just because they may occasionally hit them or whatever, but even if it just causes them to have to split up a little bit and veer off like that, one B-Wing's kind of lagging behind, so you're not, you know, getting blasted by all of them. Things like that. So the problem I find a lot is people will basically go towards 
an edge with their opponent, trying to get them to turn hard into them. Right. And then they hard, turn hard as well into them, and you end up jousting. Yeah, exactly. And basically, you just spun the map and are flying straight at them anyways. Yep. Yep. So why didn't you just go straight at them at that point? Yeah, and you know maybe the, you know that can be avoided by just uh, kind of slow playing it a bit. You know, again, if I was in the opposite corner but went really slow, eventually you'd have to come to me. Really, in general, when you want to run away from them with a build like this, um, you, you kind of want to let them come in as close as you can allow them to before you try to blitz past them. And then that way they've got to turn all the way around and go all the way back, you know? A lot of uh, it, stressed shots. Yeah, if you, if you blitz past them when they're still in the middle of the board, it doesn't take them as much to turn around. So I may actually have, uh, could have gone a little slower with Dash and tried to, you know, buy some time here because you can tell kind of the way this is going. Um, he's still going to have a decent amount of guys by the time I'm down in the corner, you know? You ended up K-turning with Corn. Yeah. Yeah, because it's pretty clear at this point that he just doesn't seem to care at all about Corrin, and he's going all in on Dash. So um, it's kind of the easiest way for Corrin to kind of come back around. Uh, maybe I could have gone all the way around, down around the asteroids and hard turned around, but um, I think I'm just going to come back, like do a green straight and then hard turn and just be behind them. And there's the B-Wing getting. Yeah, good four hits on the B-Wing. Yep. On the lead guy there. Which is a great number because yeah. if you do it again, exactly. he gets toast in two shots. Yeah, unfortunately, the way the, worth, the math usually works out against Zs and Bs is, uh, yeah, you can one shot a Z or two shot a B wing, but usually it takes, you know, one more than that, and they've they've got like one or two health left. Overkill them. Basically. Yeah, and you have to overkill them, but you know, thumbs breaks. It's yet another problem that you know the lowly X wing is having right now is that. You know the, the way the math works out. You can blast them uh, in pretty much the same effort that it takes you to kill a Z at 95. Really, and there was dash. You yeah, continue evading. to utilize the range three. Yeah, to get extra green dice and evade out of stuff. Although I think this B is going to get some damage through here. Yeah, after the target lock, he gets that three hits. Yeah, yeah. So he finally got a couple through. Um, now, did you not hard turn with corn? Uh, for the fear that he would end up hard turning towards him. Yeah, I, you know, I just, I, I guess, I wanted to wait until I knew, you know, he wasn't sending anybody over there, or, or even, um, you know, it might not have been that bad if just the one guy came for him. Corn could handle one on one, yeah, but that, uh, that random B wing. But occasionally, you know, some sometimes uh, when you're turning people on their heels like this, they they'll just, you know, give up and go for the other guy. You know, so, so I just wanted to be sure he wasn't going to hard turn everybody towards Corn and. That's, um, that's normally not even that bad of a, an idea if yeah. your opponent wasn't playing Super Dash. Yeah. Because it looked like if that was so, something like Decimator or a Falcon, yeah. it's going straight and you can hard turn and actually get some shots off right. without getting any or retail. And I guess Falcon. even at this point he could still change his mind and go for Corn, but I'm, I'm just pretty sure he's, he's in on Dash here. Yeah. And if he does that... He basically wouldn't be able to get back on dash until dash is well past this corner. You know, it's like this is pretty much the best opportunity for him to corner dash coming up in the next you know turn or two here. So you figure he's going to go for it, and um, you know then you just bring corn back to punish him for it. So, so the problem if he if he doesn't now corn is going to get probably a range two or three shot, right? And then next turn going to get maybe a one shot twice. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, if he can get that. I think just because of where the asteroid by corn is there, it takes him maybe an extra turn here to uh, get back into the fight because he's he's got to have to he's got to clear the uh, stress and yeah. Like if he could do a bank to clear the stress and be about you know over where that asteroid is, he'd be able to shoot and everything. It would be great, but because that's there, he's probably got to do a straight yeah. and then do a hard turn on the next turn. But he'll still uh, get in position more or less on time, hopefully. <laughs> but um. Yeah, this is also, inevitably, you end up getting down to the far side of the board and really having to... This is where um, Korn can't really pull out any crazy maneuvers because yeah. he's basically stressing himself to get that free focus every turn. Oh, uh, dash, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, dash. Yeah, um, and, and, yeah, you're just limited where you can go. Um, so you're pro he's got two, two straight, two softs, and what else is his greens? Um, it's one straight, two straight, and one banks. So, you know, pretty standard. Um, yeah, a lot of people, you know, they don't like playing uh, Super Dash because they feel like, you know, well, then you're limited to greens and this and that. But, um, 
as long as you're not blocked, it's really not that big a deal. You know, you just got to get used to playing it. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, you, you might get cornered eventually a little bit, but... Slimmer of Greens with boost and barrel roll yeah. backing it up. You know, it, it, I, people are basically more worried about him getting blocked because he's predictable with the greens, but um, yeah. that's why you need to kind of always be having everybody kind of trailing you anyway. Um, it just has to do with kind of the approach you take over, you know, early rounds and, um, you know, how it has an effect on on your ability to not get blocked three turns later, basically. He's basically he's basically ended up where a swarm kind of wants the yeah. larger ships. He's yeah. completely covered that entire corner. Yeah. And with your stress, you're basically going to end up somewhere. You can probably get out of that B-wing in the back yeah. with the barrel roll, but then you'll be super cornered. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems like he's he's got a lot more room to work with here than you'd like as far as just how open the middle of the map is and asteroids and stuff. Um, you know, Dash, you do get to ignore asteroids and all, but not really if you did try to do some surprise white maneuver, you know, because then you're not getting actions. Uh, so, yeah, I'm probably looking to just barrel roll farther away here and be way up in the corner and just try to outrange stuff. Maybe try to take out the lead guy. Yeah, range three is basically your your first yeah. concern. That extra green dice against all those. And rings. again, on, and on the next turns, as they start to really come in to maybe block you, then yeah, you you take a little bit of a uh, fire. You know, it's kind of inevitable inevitable to get a couple pot shots or whatnot on you. But uh, hopefully, then that's when you can get cute and do like a big white maneuver, like a three turn or bank or four straight or something, just to get past them, and then. Uh, you know they, they've you're pretty much just on jailbreak after that they've you've gotten through the and the, one all, chain. the dance starts all over again yeah and they don't have enough time exactly to corner you now you're also in a lot of trouble because there are quite a lot of target locks yeah oh yeah point. he's got target locks all day long there so but as long as you're not in range of some of them it doesn't matter but yeah it's it's good on his part um i guess this is a definitely a smart uh play to um you know instead of just focusing by default uh, to target lock, assuming that some of these guys are going to get dodged or whatever, and then you know whenever they finally do get a shot, they've got focus and target lock. I do think that the swarms in general should probably stick to target locking because right. your opponent's only going to shoot at one guy. Right. So, I mean, you're not using it defensively on the other five or six guys that took focus. Yep. There's a plug for uh, the laser pointers from Harbor Freight. If you don't have them, go get them. They're the greatest thing ever. Five dollars or something? <laughs> yeah. The uh, amount of ships that were bonked around while measuring for uh, line of fire decreased by about 3,000% Yeah. this tournament. Uh, yeah, see, unfortunately, all three of those just happen to be in range. Um, what I'm doing there is I'm checking. I, I pretty much know which guy I'm going to shoot at, but as I'm shooting when you can you know legally do it, I'm checking range to see who everybody who's in range, and then that way I know how many shots are coming back if maybe I want to decide if I want to keep a focus for defense or something like that. Now, at this point, he rolls... He yeah. dies because of the asteroid and yeah. then ends up rolling double focus. Now that guy <laughs> might, might have been good to focus, but you never know, you know. It, but he was also the low health. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's not like they have a ton of green dice anyway. That's just kind of unfortunate there. But yeah, to get four hits through twice and basically be able to two shot a B wing is uh, is pretty nice. Especially since he was one of the four that, or one of the three that's going to shoot you. And see, time. yeah, and see right here at this moment, Dash is still looking pretty good. He's only lost two shields, and uh, you know he's only got these two shots coming back. I think the dice start to go in his favor here, and Dash eats way more damage way quicker than you would like here. But um, I mean, that's range three through an Asher. I'm rolling four greens on two reds here, yeah. and I got to focus. Yeah, it's, so odds would tell you that you have a yeah, and I've still got eight health. So I'm looking pretty pretty good here, you know. Target locks in the second and two hits. Yeah, so he, so he has two there. Let's see. Okay, plenty of symbols there. I didn't even have to spend the focus. Yep. I'm just trying to remember when Dash actually ends up taking a bunch of damage here. As if this is a, another <laughs> I feel like he super definitely, close asteroid check with the laser. Yeah. I think it's probably clear. Though it is, yeah, pretty darn close. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got to try to stabilize it. Oh, yeah, over Sha it. shaky hands yeah. in a top eight. Yeah. You've been up for quite a while with a lot of soda. Yeah, yeah, caffeine and uh, lack of sleep. 
It's one hit, one focus. Yeah, this, yeah, this guy has focus and target lock. Yeah, so he gets so the, he's in the good three. Three. We get four dice. I guess it was three, the asteroid. Yep. <laughs> okay, so, you know, just one hit off. Still looking pretty good. Still has two shields. Uh, he's only got three ships left to work with. Corrin's coming up from behind. Finally. Yeah, <laughs> finally. Um, do seems you feel, like, Do you feel like that after you've killed three ships, Corrin can basically run the table? Against oh, yeah. Usually. Pieces? Usually. Yeah. Um, you know, with... So, something I guess I mean usually that's about where the time constraint is coming into play um, you know we were doing 60 minute rounds uh, if it was 75 there would definitely be you know time for that um, since FFG changed uh, how many rounds have to be done for these um, store championships now they're they're basically about the same number of rounds as a regional tournament uh, it's like you know the same as the regionals were last year um, so it's, these are long days. You got to play. I think we had to play what five rounds of Swiss and then a top eight. So you know when you got eight games, um, you know a lot of these stores they're going to want to run sixty minute rounds. You know that's just how it is. So because you end up wasting about an hour and a half, and you're, doing, you're yeah. doing seventy-five. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's understandable. So um, you know if if it, if you got the time to uh, to do that with corn, it's cool. If not. Um, you know, you, you hope that you're just kind of ahead at that point. And, you know, either you just don't lose either one or, you know, if by the time they do finally manage to kill Dash, it can be a little nerve-wracking because it can be really close to that time limit and it, the round could end right then and, you know, they might barely have enough ships alive. But uh, usually Corrin can finish off enough of them that uh, he's worth more than the one or two random guys still sitting around. Looking like the range one attempts... Yeah, coming up right around now. So he's he's looking to do a barrel roll here to try to maximize, I guess, his odds of blocking me. Yeah, because yeah, you're probably doing a one soft, which yeah. he can't he can't get far enough forward to stop. Yeah, but to stop your uh, boost attempts is probably his yeah, second concern. That's that's another thing. Um, I'd say that's a little harder because you know you can obviously barrel roll or boost in whichever order, so usually you can weasel out, but um, maybe. I think with that Z turning, that soft, it kind yeah. of stops your boost. Yeah, he's, he's in a pretty good position for all this. Um, I'm wondering if instead of doing the three straight and then barrel rolling to the right there, if that B wing had just taken a stress to do maybe a four straight, if he would have actually been able to block uh, maneuver or something. I, I don't know. Uh, he might just also be working, thinking he can't quite block me, but he can. Um, he can at least kind of get the firing arcs in a nice spot, you know. That might be the idea here. Man, it would be nice if... Uh, His first bonk of the game. <laughs> yeah. Which is surprising. Normally, with swarms, you get a lot more of that. Seems like the thing to do here would be to try to get Dash to somehow barrel roll and boost kind of back. Man, yeah, that's not going to work. I was thinking, you know, kind of back, uh, I guess, to Dash's right now mm -hmm. and try to get past uh, the two back guys, but, it, yeah, you can't quite do that. Yeah, you can't boost in any position at the moment. Not with the stress. It would have taken like a one hard and then being able to still do actions after that. So it wasn't yeah. really an option. So again, it's that. So yeah, he does have me blocked that free in pretty focus good. Kinda yeah. Limits that action. Yeah, this is where you could at least, uh, you know, that front B wing has obviously got me dead to rights at range one there. And he did block me from uh, just kind of boosting straight and then maybe barrel rolling or something like that to try to get away. But. Um, yeah, the other guys are at least range two. I guess here I'd probably just take another focus and just target lock uh, maybe the Z and just hope that maybe I can just uh, blast him away. And sometimes you just, just like uh, interceptors or whatnot, sometimes you just got to turtle up. Yeah. Um, it is I might, funny that he prob even if he had let you boost, yeah. both those guys in the back would still have shots. Yeah. Um, another thing I might be considering here is if, if I barrel roll – kind of backwards a bit. I think that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Try I could, I could probably well, I could probably get out of arc of that back B-wing. And, uh, you know, one less shot would be... Actually, I'd get out of arc both B-wings. Both B-wings, yeah. And that probably would be the right thing to do here. Um, you end up turning it up, though. I don't think I'd do it, yeah. I might have been worried about being on the asteroid but and not having a shot, but it, it still would have been the right call, honestly. I wonder if the, an argument is to be made just to deal the damage while you have the opportunity. Right. Because now you're, you're focused target locked. Right. But yeah, if I barrel rolled back there, I, I might have also been looking at maybe, it's hard to tell on here with the angle, maybe I still would have been an arc of the back B-wing. Yeah. But um, 
yeah, it it might have still been worth it just to get out of the one, but definitely if it would have avoided both, it would have been worth it even if I wasn't shooting. Because um, you would probably be in range one of the Z95. Yeah, and then and then on the next turn, I might have been able to pull some maneuver to just run away. Now, Cornus looks like he's going to get a range three shot. Yeah. Which, All you right. know, it's a, it's a B-wing, so yeah, probably doing finally damage. in the action. Yeah, and he... He has an old target lock from the last round where he wasn't doing anything, so he's got focus and target lock, which is nice. So, uh, which he also has fire control system. Yeah, so, so he'll get that target he's lock gonna right spin, back. Yeah, he's gonna spin it regardless. Yep. And we got three hits there. Yep, time fire control. That's the old fire control motion. <laughs> and double eyeballs when he's stressed. So three hits, I think. On yeah, whichever B wing that is. Man, he is rolling a crazy number of focuses on those like few green dice he does get yeah. when they don't have focus. That's like five for five or something. It's almost a mind game. So oh, I so think now okay. Be to, uh, I think I'm f maybe focusing on that B wing. I, di I didn't see which one. To I, take him out. I thought I target locked the Z95, but uh, I guess we're gonna see here. Yeah, I did target lock the Z95. Um, maybe I should have just focused on that B wing, but. I don't know, it's so about the same difference. Evade symbols that time. Yeah, you got two evades with Z there, so all I do is take out the shields. Well, so you, well looks like you killed it. <laughs> yeah, seems like it uh, was a pretty hard hit there. But, um, yeah, it's pretty close here. I mean, if, if the dice failed him here and he doesn't do much damage to dash, then uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of hope. Um, yeah, yeah, with Cornhorn swooping in yeah. next turn. He needs to get some good hits here on dash, so he can certainly do it. Um, I mean, he's got he's got his entire army to bear. Yeah. The natural three hits. Yeah, I think that's from the B wing in the back. Yep. yep. There we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's good. All right. Spin the focus. Block two. So still only one. I still have the shield left. Yep. Um, yeah. Get one of those. Oh, I think I actually still have both focuses. I think there's another one hiding under there. Um, I, I didn't see if I spent it on the attack or not, but I definitely you know spent the target lock. No, no, I spent both on the attack. Yeah, five, target locking. Yeah, two more hits. Yep. There's a guitar lock, too. Yeah. Yeah, good. one evade, shield's gone. Okay. Still feeling still feeling confident. Still got five hole. All right. But now here comes the range one. Four dice straight up. Now he doesn't have anything to modify it, but doesn't it always seem like that's when they drop four hits? Yeah. Like that, uh, three? Okay. Yep, three. <laughs> and, oh. Uh, and then the whiff. Yeah, so... Suddenly, now it's a little more interesting. <laughs> yeah, the dice go a little bit different there, one way or the other, and you know, two or three hits less can be all the difference here. So, hmm, now this is where you're really looking close at it to see. This is the turn where you're really considering all those white maneuver options of just getting the yeah, heck just, out of dodge. I'm just gonna do three straight and knock yeah, <laughs> and uh. You know, even if you can just get any shot, uh, you basically, obviously, your first priority is just get out and stay alive. But if you can uh, still get a shot. Um, well, the problem with you getting out right now is you can't really do a green. You're going to yeah. get that, that. Oh, yeah. Now, I mean, yeah, he's going to move first, but you got to figure it's just going to be a traffic jam. Yeah, so. he's probably going to do a one straight and yeah. barrel backwards, blocking right. every, every route. Um, but, yeah, you know... It, Top priority is just to get the heck out, and it's icing on the cake if I can get any sort of pot shot, even unmodified, whatever, at one of those two back ships because uh, they're both hurting a bit. And uh, you, you figure in with corn there, one of them could go down. But yeah, luckily you have the the pilot skill advantage. Oh yeah, that that being able to basically remove one ship off the board. Yeah, exactly. Before they even get that shot. Yep. But um. But yeah, you know they're they're all gonna probably be so close. Uh, even even a big maneuver here probably still leaves you in range one of them, and then you are still stressed that so you can't boost a barrel roll. So especially um, the back B wing, all to do is like a one straight, and it's still yeah. covering basically everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So you're really just trying to get past them and be out of arc, or uh, you know it's okay if you end up bumping into one of them, but the other ones don't really have a shot on you. You know so that guy can't shoot you either, you know, whatever. But you just don't want to get, I guess, blocked in by one with the other two having you dead to rights. Of course, another concern is if they're all going to get you in range one, Yeah, he's going to go out with no shot. Yeah. Yep. And uh, like I said, it's, it's definitely a world of difference here, having the two whole points left to your name or having, you know, four or five. 
that would be a whole different ball game, you know. He pulls a hard blocking off. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good move there. Um, he's he's blocking doing something like a, like a four straight, or, or I think. Uh, four might still clear it, but, yeah, that is the intent anyway, to block uh, like a faster straight maneuver. Um, oops, yeah. See, and then, no, I didn't really like this maneuver purely because of the Z95 K turn. Right. Because who's going to shoot? That B wing has terrible arc. Yeah. If he rams into the Z95, Z95 is not going to shoot. He's out. definitely. He may just be purely thinking, setting up that B. Yeah, you may be just thinking, you know, entirely about blocking me. I mean, really, it, you know, if he does get like one range, one shot, yeah, that would be out. enough. But, oh. Yeah, I think what happened here is he did um, another red maneuver. Yeah, which I'm not sure what it was because it wouldn't be a K turn, but probably like a three bank or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just have to turn his dial to something. So I'm, <laughs> have him do a two Hard white maneuver over there on the asteroid. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, that's that is what it is. Um, he had. He had a stress on him for about two or three rounds where he kept doing white maneuvers and, and he had a bunch of target locks and stuff, so it just got lost in the shuffle, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so we do the three bank here. And uh, does avoid most of it, but he's he's got, the, I think, one range one shot the from the Z95. Which, of course, you can't kill because yep, range one. Because range one, yep. And, and since it's a white maneuver and I stay stressed, I can't barrel roll or boost to avoid it or, or get beyond range one. Um, he doesn't have anything to modify it because he K turned, but you, but you don't want exactly have a lot of health. Yeah, so but you know it's only it's three reds on two greens with two health, so anything can happen. Yeah. Um, Corrin is just desperately trying to get in the fight here as fast as possible, <laughs> and um, trying to save Dash. That is another thing um, as far as the decision uh, process of exactly what big maneuver or whatever to do with Dash. When in doubt, if all things are more or less equal. You want to move towards Corn at some situation, I guess. You know, he's he's there to cover you and save you. So get towards him, make it a little easier for him to be well, closer to the fight. You know, is Corn's? I feel that his design is kind of get the guys away from my range one. Yeah. Don't. Hold yeah, and you can much. definitely use him for that in some cases. Um, definitely, if you're playing against more like uh, maybe some fancy like interceptors or phantoms or something, you're using them more to cover the blind spot when it's you know because you're only playing against two or three enemy ships, um, and he's got the ten pilot skill. He can he's he's a little bit of a X factor for them to consider since he's actually moving after them and can barrel roll. But um, you know he kind of has to uh, against his these swarm builds. He kind of has to be careful with that because then that's where you end up you know, getting caught by a whole bunch of them shooting you in the face. So. Looks like you just got direct hit in the face. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He So he rolls hit, hit, crit with no modifiers, and I do get two natural evades, so it seems all right, but boom, direct hit. Mm -hmm. So the Z95 is the hero of the day, taking out Dash. And you ended up taking the pot shot on the asteroided B-Wing. So right here I'm considering to do another another shot, you know, at the end of the round with Korn. Um, we're getting really close to the time limit. Um, but there's a chance with only the three dice, if, you know, against the one green there, then he's got three health. There's a chance I don't kill him, and then I can't shoot it all in the next round, and the next round's probably when time's going to get called. So I quickly end it so we can uh, pass it so we can do the next round, and then I'm I'm sure that I can, you know, do a maneuver here to get Corrin to have Arc on that B-Wing and then shoot him twice in the last round to make sure I kill him. Especially since all of his guys are, are stressed yeah. still. So they're not pulling any crazy maneuvers. Yeah, I figure. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I need to, I need to, I need one of these B wings to go down to be ahead on points, basically. And uh, obviously, it's the elimination game. It doesn't really, it doesn't matter how many points or whatever. But, um, and you know, if we had to play this out, yeah, I'm, I'm at least confident. You know, if you had another 15 minutes, or whatever, in Corn's ability to try to dance around and handle them, uh, obviously, you never know. But. Um, you know, he is a closer. All, that is what he's kind of meant to do. Most of them are at pretty low health as well. Yeah. So he does this maneuver here. I guess he's trying to clear the stress or whatever and thought it might clear. Um, you know, he could have, I guess, done a, a two white. It's a little harder 
to tell, you know, from the camera here, but it, it, it felt like at the time when you saw it, it was it was clearly yeah. off the board. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's still fairly close, obviously. But, uh, you could tell just by looking at it, though. And there's a couple of people, you know, watching nearby. They're standing behind him and stuff. You see some feet back there. They're, you know, everybody can see it. But um, I guess, you know, when you're eyeballing it, 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 it looks a lot closer when you're doing the maneuver. But um, a two white would have kept him on the board. And uh, I don't know. I guess he just wanted to really clear the stress. But it was also his full health beat. Yeah, yeah, that does suck. But but as this ends up being the last round, I think due to time, um, it it doesn't matter because you know that B wing with a two hard still wouldn't have a shot or you know be near the action. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as Corn kills this other B wing, it wouldn't have had an effect. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with a barrel roll here, I'm looking at doing two range one shots on them. Oh, he also, so he had the three hole points left, but going over the asteroid again on the way out. Took another hit. He took another hit, and it was actually the crit that drops your uh, agility by one. So he's got zero greens like a decimator there, and I'm looking to do two range ones on him with a target lock or whatever. So it's virtually impossible to not kill him here. Yeah. And then, yeah, just for good. Okay, that's he's already dead, yeah. But yeah, four hits. Yeah. Doing your due, due diligence, yeah. And there's so, no way Z95. Yeah, he rolled the green there, but you know whatever. <laughs> it was it was definitely the uh, zero or green or whatever crit though. And then yeah, there's there's just no way that the Z95 is gonna one shot full health corn here. And he uh, yeah, he tries, and he gets one there. Yep. Yeah, I was checking arc there to see if I could just shoot him, oh, but yeah, um, yeah. but I think they they did call time. Yeah, so there we go. That's the end of the round. That's the end of it. Um, so yeah, uh, I, this is the first time I've seen the footage of this since I you know played, um, and uh, I think maybe we could have uh, I could have done something different with Dash, but to keep him alive. But who knows? <laughs> it worked out, I guess. Thanks for watching our X-Wing coverage here on the Lesson Geek channel. Uh, please subscribe and stay tuned for more uh, store championship videos coming soon, and we'll see you next time.